What's going on everybody, it's Charles. The day is finally here. We're doing a stage one tune on the Golf R. All right, this video should be a blast to do. I am super, super duper pumped to finally tune the car. So we're gonna be using the integrated engineering tuning for this particular stage one, sort of stage one plus tune. This is awesome too because you can do this yourself at home. I'm in the garage and we're gonna tune it here and then we're gonna go drive it, then we're gonna go take it and get it dynoed. So the way this works is this. You purchase the power link and the tune from Integrated Engineering on their website. Of course, I'll link that up if you wanna check that out. When the power link gets here, you hook it up, you download the software in order to tune, which is just a simple link, very, very simple to do. Then basically you follow the steps on tuning the car. Now in order to prep the car, we wanna do a couple things. We wanna hook up a battery maintainer. This does only take about 20 minutes, so you're probably okay, but take the extra cautious step and hook it up. Also plug your computer in. If you're using a laptop with a janky battery like me, you wanna have your computer plugged in. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure everything's shut off. Heated seats, air conditioning, radio, lights, all that, turn it off. We'll go ahead and plug our power link into the car and follow the steps on the flash wizard. Plug it in and turn the ignition on. Now, if you have a push button start car like this, just don't push the brake and it'll turn the ignition on. It'll dial up the integrated engineering mothership, get your vehicle data, and then we can select the tune that we want. Now, the process is basically the same for stage one, stage two, or DSG tune. One of the great things about having the power link is that we can go back to stock if we need to, we can go to low torque, we can go stage one, stage two, depending on you know what tune you've done and some of the hard parts that we would put on the car other than the tune and the DSG tune. And it's recommended for an air intake, which I do have and we will put on at some point. But for today, we're just doing the tune. So we're gonna do the stage one high torque tune with 93 octane. Once that's done, we're gonna go back and do the same thing for the transmission. We're gonna do the DSG tune. And of course it'll run through, it'll do your tune. It takes about 20 minutes per tune. And then we will blow all the faults out and go drive the car. All right, so we have our stage one high torque file loaded on the car. We also have the DSG software loaded on the car. I have the car in comfort mode, which is where I normally drive it in. Let's go ahead and put it in race car mode and see how she does. We'll do a couple laps around my little course, and we'll test out launch control and see how it does. See just the difference between how it was from the factory and how it is now. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes, oh, amazing. Guys, this is how the car should have came from the factory. It's so smooth and so positive, I guess, like especially in the shifts, it's very positive, engaging shifts. Not like it's jamming you through the steering wheel or anything like that. Just very firm, positive shifting out of the DSG. And the power delivery is outstanding. Let's get it some more throttle again. Woo, need to keep my head back. <laughs> God bless. This car is so fun to drive. Oh my gosh, it is not. The R32, definitely not. But as far as power and the torque that you feel, it's outstanding. Ah, I love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm getting, let's hit it again, see. It's so tame and like reserved, just cruising around. I mean, I'm in sport mode now, which I normally don't drive it in. I normally am in uh, comfort mode, but in sport mode, even, even there, it's so calm and tame. But man, when you romp that throttle, it just kind of pushes you back and you just accelerate. So much better than factory. Ugh. For real, this is how the car should have came from the factory. Go again, we'll do another lap, we'll test out launchy. Oh yes, yes. Now I'll tell you the butt dyno, uh, probably 30 horsepower, probably 40 pound feet of torque, give or take. We won't know for sure until we get it back on the dyno. So what I need to do is I actually need to drive back to Winston-Salem and get it on that dyno. We're gonna do it exactly like we did the first time. I know there was a lot of questions about why I did front wheel drive only instead of all wheel drive. That's purely a matter of availability and it doesn't really matter. All we're looking for is improvement over baseline. We're not necessarily trying to chest and tweak and tune this tune that I just put on because this is an off the shelf tune. Now, what I found interesting on the tune because 
what uh, you worry about tuning the car is you don't want to push everything to the maximum limit, right? This is stage one, sort of stage one plus DSG and ECM software. And we don't want to shove all of that, all the boost, all the timing. We don't want to shove that all the way to the max. So what they do is they monitor fuel trim, they monitor intake air temperature, they monitor wastegate duty cycle to make sure we're not maxing out the wastegate duty cycle or anything like that. And then they kind of nudge and nudge and nudge till they find the right balance of drivability, power, and reliability is probably the third thing that they look at. But this is just so good. Oh. I mean, the car was pretty awesome from the factory. Don't get me wrong. It was a fun car from the factory, but having it tuned just wakes everything up. And I think if we put an air intake and that turbo inlet pipe on it, it would probably wake it up even more. Improvement in throttle response, because the throttle response in the car from the factory was not the best in the world. So it definitely improved on the throttle response as well. We can try some manual shift action. Ah. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. It's so much fun. All right, let's let's uh, let's get somewhere where we can test out some launch control action and see how that does. This should put the launch RPM up a bit higher. I think it's at around 4,000 RPM. And the way we access launch control is very simple. We have to have the car in race mode, which is just a touch of a button. We also have to disengage or de-energize or let's call it turn off, dumb, dumb Charles. That's what it's really called. We also have to turn off the all the electronic stability control. Now, I don't think this shuts everything off. I'm very confident that there still would be some type of intervention, but uh, according to the car and the way the repair manual is written, we have two stages of turning off traction control. We have limited traction control, and then we have full disabled. I think even with full disabled, we still would have traction control intervention. Now I already have it in race mode. The way we turn off the traction control, if we tap the button once, it goes to that limited mode that I mentioned. If we tap it again, it turns it back on. If we hold the button down for about 10 seconds, it'll beep, you heard the beep, and now our traction control is completely turned off, allegedly completely turned off, all of our driver assist systems are disengaged, so we don't have adaptive cruise, we don't have lane departure, we don't have anything assisting us. Now you may remember I turned off the sound actor, which is why the car's pretty quiet, even though we're in race mode and we've gotten some high RPM. I am not gonna be turning that back on, but I actually think I like it quiet. If I want a loud, kind of throaty sounding car, that's what we have the R32 for. This is tame, it's quiet. I don't have to worry about letting off the throttle because some, you know, driving through the neighborhood or anything like that, making the neighbors mad. It has just more of a refined overall feel where the R32 is a little bit more raw in even that car. I mean, let's be honest, it's not an air-cooled 911 or anything like that, but it's, it's a lot more raw compared to this, a lot less electronic intervention than this car has. So at the next intersection, we're gonna try and do this launch control. When we have everything off, traction control, and we're in race mode, we need to come to a full and complete stop, full press of the brake pedal, then full press of the accelerator pedal. That should indicate race mode it, or launch control. It'll tack up to about, again, I think they said 4,000 RPM, and then let off the throttle and the car should go. So let's test it out. Here we go, we got a clear spot. Come to a full stop. 4,000 RPM. Woo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, doggy! <laughs> yes! Ugh, oh, so fun! Oh, God, that's fun! Oh, I could do that all day long. I love it. Even when the car was stock, it was pretty awesome. But I really like how much more awake the car is and how it responds better. The shifts are more positive when we're in sport mode. If we boot back to comfort mode, the car's just like it was from the factory. In fact, you'd never really even know the DSG was tuned other than we have our gear indicator right here in the instrument cluster. But even in comfort mode, we still have that very smooth roll onto the throttle, plenty of power. This thing's gonna be bonkers if we ever go stage two, which we may go stage two. So I am on top of the world with how awesome this tune is. It's fantastic. I, I just, I can't really even explain to you guys how this should be how the car came from the factory. It really, really should. 
Now, of course, there's negatives to the tune, right? We may have to deal with warranty issues because we've modified software. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Hopefully we never get there. And if we do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Now, tuning the car, changing the ECM, TCM software does not completely void the warranty. That can't happen. If my radio fails and I have the ECM tuned, those two don't have anything to do with each other. So keep in mind though, that if you do tune your car or you do make modifications to your car, you run the risk to potentially void the warranty on that or those related components. So let's say like that GTI that Ricky and I took the engine apart on, if I put a piston through the block or something like that and my car is tuned, they may say that it was due to the tune and you know the rebuild is on us boy what an awesome opportunity to put some more bigger turbo go fasty parts so maybe some integrated engineering hard parts on the car uh if we if we do that oh my gosh uh it's just so smooth so smooth so chill but uh, man in race mode it's just definitely more aggressive i love it oh i love it of course, now we run the risk of, hey, you got good horsepower. Uh, well, let's add some more horsepower because now that extra you know, 30 or so horsepower we added doesn't feel like anything. So next up, time to drive to Winston-Salem, get the car dynoed and see just how much power we get. All right, so we're here at Everything Euro, time to get the car dynoed again. The process is the same as it was the first time. We strap the car down and we do a couple of runs and then we compare to see just how different it was, factory versus tuned. All right, just got back from Winston-Salem, getting the car dynoed. As you guys saw, these numbers are awesome. My guess was 315 wheel horsepower, and I was unsure about the torque, and boy, I was pretty close. Let's take a look at these numbers. So our factory numbers at the front wheels was 273.46 horsepower and 276.41 pound-feet of torque. Now the car's rated for about 290 and 290 from the factory, so those numbers are pretty darn good. When we did our stage one tune with DSG software, we jumped up to 319.10 wheel horsepower and 352 pound-feet of torque, sorry, 352.34, gotta get that .34 in, for an improvement of 45.46 horsepower to the wheels and 75.93 pound-feet of torque. Now remember, that's just software. No hard parts added onto this car for that dyno run. It is just ECM and DSG software. Now, if you're gonna do the high torque stage one tune, you gotta do DSG software if you have an automatic, and it is recommended for an air intake, which I do have. We'll be putting that on at some point. So there we go, overall awesome improvement on the car. Again, I can't say it enough, this is how the car should have came from the factory. Big ups to the guys at Integrated Engineering who are good friends of mine for hooking up this tune on the R. Oh, and I think we're gonna go stage two. Shh. Don't tell anybody. So as always, drop the links down below to everything we talked about today. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Let's watch that launch control video again, because that was cool. 4,000 RPM. Woo-hoo-hoo, doggy. <laughs> yes.